Hello everybody, welcome back to CrimeNet News. Despite some grim news this week, we have a lot to discuss. We have confirmation on the next content release this summer, potential features for year two and beyond, and the new matchmaking server provider. So long as Cellbyte, you will not be missed. So mask up folks, there's a lot to talk about. To start off big, we have an exclusive update for you guys. Starbreeze is moving away from Excelbyte after its failure with Payday 3's launch. A few weeks ago, we learned about a new matchmaking system, and the latest update includes code for the one and only EdgeGap. So EdgeGap is a Canadian game server distributor specializing in matchmaking and server hosting. Hopefully, this new provider will be more cost efficient and reliable for Starbreeze in the long run. Our first crossover with Payday 3 is finally here, but it's not the Rainbow Six crossover that was leaked a few months ago. Instead, it's the iconic Alienware mask. And if you're not familiar, this mask has now made an appearance to all three Payday titles. So all you have to do is link your Alienware Arena account to your Starbreeze Nebula account and you'll get instant access to the preset mask. Additionally, there's a DayZ collab with all four masks available in DayZ from July 4th to the 23rd. Although, nothing for Payday, as they said it's a one-way street this time. In an upcoming update, we'll see a new tool, the Trip Laser. You'll get one Trip Laser per heist without the extra pocket skill. This laser marks any enemy passing by and has unlimited usage, unlike the motion detector, which now has 30 uses. The downside is its limited 3 meter long laser. While it shares some similarities with the motion detector, the trip laser seems intended more for loud gameplay, while the motion detector is more for stealth. It's coming sometime this summer. Sadly, there's no July content update this month, meaning only minor changes and bug fixes are to be expected. The reason is Sweden's mandated employee vacation, which is 25 days out of the year, uh, which Starbreeze likes to take usually in the summer and Christmas times. Despite this, we are still getting updates outside the game like a new Payday 3 roadmap, more Twitch drops, and a community event with rewards. When the dev team returns, get ready for a wild summer. We have a confirmation of several major features coming. DLC 3, Land of the Free, is coming in August and DLC 4, Fear and Greed, is probably going to be coming in September. For free, we're getting a new heist, VoIP, or Voice Over IP, Server Browser, and CrimeNet within the next few months as well. This summer is stacked, so I say show Starbreeze some appreciation by giving a review to the game and playing the game itself. They really want to see the community support this summer, so go out and play heisters. Before we move on to the future of Payday 3 and beyond year 1, let's go over the community highlights this week. The Payday 2 clip of the week is coming to us from 1ace Joe. There's no camera watching this, right? Uh, there's this a camera right there. there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> God, I miss the days of Payday 2. I mainly wanted to highlight this because it's something that I really miss from the old Payday days. Uh, that being, if you put a shotgun under someone's chin, they tend to go flying. It's so satisfying. And Payday 3 clip of the week comes from It's The Hotline. I hear him. <laughs> Dude, who did he think he was sneaking up on? Dude was walking like Agent 47 but screaming the entire time. You know, I just think this was the future Payday 3 Hitman crossover in action. Not to mention, we just did a podcast with Hotline, so you should go check that out as well. Payday 2 mod of the week goes to the Dracarys Gen 12 custom weapon by RGC9000. Fans of the John Wick franchise will recognize this gun, complete with unique animations by Playbonk. And for Payday 3, we have a very important mod that hopefully gets to come to the base game very soon. Useful Bots by Captain Alpha allows you to accurately tell the AI where to go. This for now only works in solo mode, but allows you to point at a spot, hit a button, and the AI in that slot will go to that spot and stay. On to the future of Payday, we have a lot of insights from Mio, Almir, and Elizabeth. 
who were all streaming Boys in Blue after its release. Note that these are not confirmed features, but things that Starbreeze is looking into and feels confident enough to discuss. Their initial focus is on the remainder of Year 1, and these features will be coming in Year 2 and onward if they ever come at all. Due to priorities, they can't implement everything immediately. Mio mentioned that he would love to redo the entire skill system, but it's a matter of priority. They acknowledge that sometimes internal testing fails, resulting in the removal or alteration of features that the community may like, such as the prototype drill. Personally, I ask Starbreeze to consider adding the dodge meter back into Payday 3. Zidane from Mod Workshop found some operational code for this. Uh, Starbreeze had disabled it, but he re-enabled it with mods. This isn't the dodge that we know from Payday 2, but instead this is a meter that when taking damage and reaches zero, your armor would then take damage. It could then regenerate back to full, giving the player a buffer for taking damage. They are planning additions to the skill system and admit that they want to make finding skills easier. Currently, they acknowledge that Payday3.gg does it better than the game and they want to remedy that. Mio talked about not wanting to add damage to the current weapon but to avoid confusing it with the melee system. In the future, they want to ensure the melee system is a proper weapon-based combat. Mio also doubled down on modifiers not being optional, but suggested a very fast rotation, potentially hourly. They like the idea of allowing solo mode players to choose modifiers. These difficult modifiers would come with bonuses, hopefully arriving soon. They've been testing an all modifiers difficulty above overkill, but feel it doesn't merit a new difficulty. Instead, they're considering an optional side difficulty similar to one down in Payday 2. For future difficulty changes, they're listening to feedback and plan to avoid massive changes to existing ones. Significant changes will instead be reserved for new difficulties. They do not want to make many additional difficulties after Overkill to ensure each one is unique, unlike Payday 2 with Mayhem and Onward. They also will be reviewing the game's current difficulty after year one. They aim to change existing heists, adding more randomization and maybe some new objectives. They also want to change the weapon stat UI, but don't expect it in year one. They're also hoping at making guns a bit more distinct from one another, uh, although restricted by real life constraints. Some changes to gun balancing might be implemented after the first half of year two. They hope to make the syntax error DLC mess non-preset soon. They also plan to add more platform achievements and hardcore in-game challenges with rewards, which could help alleviate some game staleness. Regarding the game's longevity, despite the recent fears stemmed from Almir's cry for players to play the game, or the game won't be continuing, Mio mentioned on Twitter that part of his job is planning for year 2, 3, and beyond. They have no plans to stop, but want to ensure the community's support for ongoing improvements. And that's all we have for this week. Thank you so much for joining, and if you got this far, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you all next week. Keep those helmets flying, heisters.